Hey, this is Joe Bagley here, and today I'm going to teach you how to do the fifth project Euler problem in Python. I've been writing a ton of Python lately, uh, especially Django. I've been really fired up with the way it's been working. I think it's great. It's a lot easier to debug than my JavaScript code. I was a huge Node guy. I'm starting to transfer a little bit more into Python and Django. Um, I think I've been converted. I'm in. So today I'm going to show you how to do this in Python. So, the fifth project Euler problem is pretty simple. You want to find a number that is evenly divisible by all numbers from 1 to 20. And so, as always, I like to jump in and think about this outside of code. So, if we're thinking about the number 1, uh, all numbers from 1 to 1, we would just have to use the number 1 to find a number that's divisible by all of them. If we made it 2, again, it would just be 2. Then we get to 3. So, what these columns represent is this is the number, this is the number that we would have to multiply the previous number by to make it uh, evenly divisible by all numbers from one to that number. So in this one it's three and now our total stands at six. So now we get to four, this is when it gets interesting. So previously we've just multiplied it by the number that we're getting to, one, two, and three. But in this case we don't need to do that. We could multiply it by two or multiply it by 4 and make this number 24 that would be evenly divisible. But we're looking for the smallest number that is evenly divisible by all of those numbers. And in this case, to get it, it's 12. So it's 2 and then 12. Now why is that? Well, if you look at the list of numbers when we're going up, we see that 4 is evenly divisible by 2. So we don't need to do the whole 4 because a 2 is already represented in there. One of its factors is already represented. Now we go to 5 we'll say that 5 doesn't have any of its factors represented in the previous list. So the multiplier is 5. And the total, in this case, goes to 60. Now, we get to the number 6. And we go through and we look through the multipliers list, and we already have a 2 and a 3, which are its factors. So we divided 6 by 3, we have 2. We divide 2 by 2, and we have 1. And then we're still at 60. So let's represent this in code. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so first thing we do, we do it evenly divisible. It's a function. And it's going to take n as a parameter. So we're going to say for i in range 1 to n plus 1. Now the reason we do n plus 1 is because um, for the range, if we did 1 to n and n was 20, it would only print 1 to 19. It goes up to the number, not through it. Um, that's a bit annoying, but whatever. That's fine. We're also going to declare an array called mult. And that is going to represent these numbers in the middle. 1, 2, 3, 2, 5, and 1. So as we go through, what we're going to do is we're going to say current number is equal to i. We're going to say for element in mult if current number divided by the element is equal to zero. then the current number is going to be equal to current number divided by the element. And when we divide something in Python, it automatically converts it to a float. We don't want that, so we're going to leave it as an integer. Now, what just happened here? Um, we'll, we'll do it with 6. We'll start with 6. So the number here, we're basically iterating through the multipliers. 1, 2, 3. And then we get to a number, so 6 divided by 1, that's evenly divisible. We divide it by 1. 6 divided by 2, that's evenly divisible. Um, so we divide it by 2. That's represented here. And we're doing it for all the elements in that array. So once we get that, we're going to go mults dot append. We're going to append the current number. Let's go ahead and let's print and let's see if it works. Okay, and then we are going to go ahead and we're going to call it evenly divisible to 
20. Tutorial.py. And you'll see it did exactly what we expected. Look at these numbers. It made a list. Nope, oh, that's not it. And now, how do we get the final number? Well, we reduce these. We take the product of all the numbers in the multiplier array. So, to get our answer, we do return. And now we have to import something called func tools. Now, if I was uh, keeping score of what's better, Node or Python here, I would be saying, for this one, I would say point Node because you don't need to import something to do a reduce function. You can just do it. But all of the built-in functionality is one of the reasons Node is so heavy and a little bit slower. So, I'm going to use something called Lambda here. Now, you are definitely looking at this and going, what the hell is that? Um, if you don't know what Python reduces, it's the same thing. It's JavaScript reduce. It's just written a little bit differently. In JavaScript, you would do something like mults. Okay, so this is the equivalent function in JavaScript. I'll write it out for you real quick. Okay, let me explain what's going on here real quick. So what you do is you have one argument, which is a function using lambda. You have another argument, which is the array. And you have another argument, which is the initial value of this number, of the, or the initial value of product, which is going to be 1. So every single time we iterate through an element in the array, we update the value of the product to be whatever is returned over here. I know that's confusing. I would highly recommend reading up on reduce. But let's see if we get the right answer. We do. OK, awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you guys don't mind, um, subscribe to these videos. I'm cranking out a bunch of them. I'm going to try to make more. Appreciate you tuning in. Thanks. Bye.